or as I used in Twitter as uh, never before. And uh, all the candidates uh, in our writing have, uh, I think, tried Twitter at uh, some point. And I uh, actually went to see what uh, uh, the liberal candidate was uh, saying on his Twitter account. And he started Twitter just recently. And uh, one of your posts uh, was uh, quite intriguing for me. You said that it went uh, canvassing on that evening and you found that everyone will vote liberal. That will be 100 support for the liberal party. And uh, I don't know whether I and my volunteers go to different neighborhoods or uh, as one of our uh, volunteers suggested that maybe that canvas was based on one particular household. But uh, we're definitely not seeing that. We're seeing a lot of people that are looking for change in this election, that are really dissatisfied with what's going on in our political process, but uh, not 100% support for anyone. Uh, of course, we are meeting a lot of uh, liberal supporters, uh, many of whom are actually asking us uh, what the name of the liberal candidate is uh, in this election. Then there are Green supporters, there are NDP supporters and people leaning towards the Greens and the NDP in this election. And of course, don't pull yourselves, there are conservative supporters in our writing as well. And that is the way it should be in a healthy democratic system. There are many different opinions, no one has an actual majority, many uh, viewpoints are represented in discussions. And uh, I think this is great, an opportunity to talk, to work together, and uh, you wouldn't believe what uh, discussions we sometimes have on the doorstep with uh, conservative supporters, liberal supporters, and NDP and Green supporters. Sometimes discussions going on for half an hour or more about uh, what we can do for, for the good of Canada, and I think this is great. What we're also seeing uh, is quite a big number of people that hadn't voted in 06 or 08, but they're definitely voting this time because they just do not want to be taken for granted anymore. They're saying that they do not want this writing to be just called a Tory swampland, wasteland, you know, as the media like to call us, that their voice is not represented, they want to go and vote this time. What we're also noticing is a large number of former conservative supporters, people that may have been voting conservative for all their lives, but they're telling us that they just cannot force themselves to vote conservative this time around because they're seeing that Stephen Harper's values do not reflect their own values anymore. What they're saying is that there is always, from the conservative party, all this talk about prudence, good economic management, uh, high moral standards, and what we get in return is uh, scandals after scandals, lack of any transparency and openness from our government, public resources being wasted on parties, foreign uh, summits, hospitality, bigger jets, uh, larger prisons, uh, self-promotion on the taxpayer money. And uh, what we're also seeing is the Conservative Party misleading Canadians, making bathroom deals to continue, for example, the war in Afghanistan, whereas there is a decision of House of Commons to end our military involvement in Afghanistan. There is a government right now that's asking the parliament for blank checks every, every time that they can. They're silencing whistleblowers while not allowing regular Canadians or the right kind of Canadians, I don't know, to attend their events, as you've seen from the news. This is a government that's leaving its seniors and children in poverty and at the same time helping the richest CEOs in Canada get millions of dollars in bonuses every year. This government and this party that's ruling right now is in contempt of our parliament. Just think of it, we're the first country in the British Commonwealth to have the federal government called in contempt of parliament, called in contempt of our democracy, and therefore in contempt of Canadian voters. What does this party do when we get this news? This party is asking us for a majority. There is no shame, there is no embarrassment, there is no quiet admission of mistakes. No, the Conservative Party is asking us for more power. So they're asking us to congratulate them on their great victories. Will we congratulate them on May 2nd? Will we give them a promotion in this election as they're asking? I definitely hope not. The time when you could be afraid and unable to work with others is passing. We're living in the 21st century, not the 19th. Right now, it's a time for cooperation friendly discussion, even if we don't agree, finding solutions together for the good of the whole society. And screaming, pointing fingers, personal ads, personal attack ads, and uh, throwing money and media spin into your own mistakes will not work anymore. 
As you may have heard, the New Democrats has released their platform this Sunday, and it talks about practical solutions that can be implemented and must be implemented as soon as possible for us to get back on track in Canada. What this platform talks about is training and hiring hundreds of new doctors and nurses, giving incentives to the ones that left Canada to come back to work here. We're talking about bringing down wait times, eliminating the lack of hospital beds, the situation where there are not enough family doctors for Canadians. We're talking about making medications more affordable to Canadians, expanding seniors' care, making sure that the health care accords are renewed with Canadians in mind, not the lobbying groups. What this platform also talks about is doubling the Canada Pension Plan, improving family and parental leave benefits, and lifting all seniors and children in Canada out of poverty immediately. We talk about reducing credit card rates and bank card fees. In terms of helping our economy, we are talking about reduction of the small business tax to 9%. We are creating a job creation tax credit for every new job formed in Canada. We're talking of stopping sellout of Canadian industry and resources, setting up the corporate tax rate at a logical level, not the level that the CEOs ask Stephen Harper to play to that. The NDP platform also talks about a national child care system. We haven't had one since World War II, and many people cannot go to work cannot become actively employed because there is no national child care system. We're talking about the reduction of the postgraduate <coughs> tuition rates so that students don't drop out one or two years into their studies, so that postgraduate education is not about going to the food bank because you can either buy your textbook or eat. We're talking about fighting student debt. The NDP platform calls for restoration of the long-form census the long-form census, as you know, was gutted by the Canadians, whereas the whole Canadian society was talking that this is not the right decision to make. We talk about protection of the rights of the disabled, actually realizing women's equality in Canada in the 21st century. The NDP reaffirms its commitment to ending the war in Afghanistan, bringing our troops back. We promote health, development, and human rights work abroad instead, instead of Sending our military whenever there is a problem arising for the United States in their foreign policy. We're talking about making every single vote count in Canada through a proportional electoral system. We talk about ending the Prime Minister's power to avoid the elected representatives of the people. We also call for the abolition of the Senate, which right now eats up millions of dollars every year. At the same time, the unelected senators can afford and can feel quite comfortable with killing bills that were passed by the elected House of Commons. <coughs> While the Senate is still not abolished, we call for all senators to be banned from fundraising for political parties, as there are fundraising for the Tories right now. At the same time, as you know, the NDP is always called by the Conservatives to be a party that cannot balance its budgets. Provincial governments that were led by the NDP throughout Canada have the best fiscal record in balancing their books. And we are sure that the NDP can balance the budget within four years as by current projections. And what's important, the NDP platform is fully costed out. If you go on the NDP website, you will find a document there that gives you the specific figures for every single promise, every single sentence that is put into the NDP platform. The Tories are pretending that this election is about the management of the economy, but it's actually about our democracy. It's about trust. If we cannot trust the, the Conservatives with anything, with telling the truth, how can we trust them with economics? How can we trust that what they say is actually what they do? Even if they were the best ones to manage the economy, if we cannot trust them, we're not going to do this. This election is about transparency. As you know, the Auditor General's report talks about more lies from the Tories. The debates yesterday showed more lies from Stephen Harper, more arrogance and shamelessness. And I'm hoping that on May 2nd, we will tell the Conservatives what we think of their approach. Thank you.